Welcome to Life to Uncork, the show where we break down your favorite made-for-TV movies one bottle at a time. I'm your host, Patrick Serrano, and today we are talking about Deadly Misconduct. Deadly Misconduct stars and Marie Downs and Colt Pratt. Tess, maybe on the show, we either pour it up, which means yes, or put a cork in it, which means no, thank you. So what are we going to do to this movie? Put a cork in it. Sorry. Now, if you haven't seen the movie and you want to avoid spoilers, you're going to want to go ahead and hit pause and come on back because I'm going to do a quick little recap starting now. Annie is a law and order reject who works with the district attorney, who happens to be her boyfriend, Mark. She also has an influencer slash YouTube daughter who is cooler than everyone in this movie. After immediately breaking up with Mark in the coffee shop, Annie goes to a work function and is hit on by her rival, Doug Larson. Doug is a creep and he roofies her. She passes out at his place and wakes to a barking dog and Doug Larson's dead body next to her. The killer is still in the house and she hides under the bed. Annie notices the killer has itchy ankles. When the killer is gone, Annie quickly wipes down the scene with some napkins and hides in the bushes. She is, of course, assigned to the case, and Mark is alongside her. He constantly hits on her while they're working together, which is sexual harassment. After her friend and daughter are stalked by the killer, Annie moves them into a hotel. That doesn't work because the YouTube daughter is almost kidnapped by a man in a van. Stranger danger! Annie breaks into a crime scene and learns that Larson was blackmailing someone, and that's why he was murdered. It turns out to be Annie's mentor slash judge when she goes to his home and finds financial documents in his office that cooperate the story, Annie pulls a gun on him and runs out with the evidence. Then she goes to the bar while trying to look as dowdy as possible and destroys the security footage tying her to Larson. While trying to piece the puzzle together, Annie notices that Mark is scratching his ankles and he claims to be allergic to dogs. He is the killer and was framing Annie for murder. Mark tries to stage a suicide, but Annie stabs him with a letter opener. She shoots Mark with a gun, and the police take his body away. Flash to weeks later for no reason. And that is Deadly Misconduct. Deadly Misconduct is one of those lifetime movies that's really, really dumb that you're watching when you're like doing laundry or something and you're like, why am I watching this? Where's the remote? Totally that vibe. Totally that vibe. The itchy ankle catching of the killer was so dumb. Like Emery Dobbins wouldn't have known her boyfriend as allergic to dogs. That just wouldn't come up ever. There's no action and this could just be a symptom of COVID. There's no action. There's nothing going on. Just people in rooms talking. That just doesn't equal exciting to watch. The fact that this movie is a Lifetime Movie Club exclusive does not want me to go to that channel and subscribe. If you had Vivica A. Fox, a Jenny Garth movie or something, Tori Spelling, let's bring some of the OGs back and have an actual draw to the Lifetime Movie Club because I am subscribing to the Lifetime Movie Club because I have to, so you don't have to. I mean, Lifetime should actually be giving me a free membership to this thing because it's totally worthless. I was watching one the other day. They blurred out a male booty. I mean, I can't even see booty on this channel. What the hell? It's a streaming service I'm paying for. At least show me a man booty. If you're going to make it an, an exclusive, it should be something that people actually want to see, not something that's like a total waste of time. I feel bad being so harsh to this movie, but I mean, I love Anne-Marie Dobbins, but she couldn't even say this movie. She's beautiful. She's great and everything she's in, but she needs a new manager. She's always in like the crappiest Lifetime movie. And now it is time for the Minority Report, the segment where we talk about representation in TV movies and why it matters. So not only was this movie boring and an exclusive Lifetime Movie Club movie, it also didn't have a lot of representation in the leading roles. There's actually a lot of actors on this IMDb, so I'm going to go through that list right now. You had Larry Golden Sr. as a guest patron, David C. Tam as a press photographer, Arika Trabona as Danielle, Nisha Washington as a coffee shop patron, and Lena Harmon as a 
press reporter. So yes, we can definitely do better with the casting and kind of everything of this one. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone. I had a phone, it matches. Oh, it doesn't match my shirt today, but this is cute. I just love it. Okay, and I guess that wraps it up for today's episode. If you want more Light to Court, you can check out our website, LifetimeUncorked.com. Don't forget to follow me at Patrick Miguel or the show at Lifetime Uncorked. You can listen to our podcast, which is currently on hiatus. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on this video. If you are so inclined, you can donate to our co page, which is a little page where we get donations. A $3 donation goes one way to help you buy wine. Thank you for my Lifetime movie subscription. Good Lord. Thank you for anybody who's donating in the future. That is it. We will talk to you next week. Okay. Bye.